Lately, it feels like the world's taken a quick trip down to the 7-Eleven and filled up a double slurpy cup with a nice steaming serving of shit. Naturally, people have looked to their favorite pastimes and hobbies to escape reality, and a good amount of us have found our escape through games. For some, multiplayer titles have been an excellent source of the social contact they've been missing out on, and getting their fix from online games seems to do the trick for them. Others have turned to single-player titles with plenty of dialogue, games like Fallout or Hades. In spite of those options, I've elected to take a different approach to combat solitude by playing DayZ. Those of you who are even vaguely familiar with DayZ might be scratching your heads, wondering why I would choose such an infamously tedious and frustrating game as my escape from tedious and frustrating reality. Here's the thing. I'm well aware of the jank that's pervaded DayZ since its inception and I know I missed playing it during its heyday. Its population is a shadow of what it once was and the remaining official servers struggle to attract enough players to justify staying open. While all that might not bode well for the developer, Bohemia Interactive, it's provided me with an unmatched experience that scratched every itch that surfaced. The best way I've seen Daisy's gameplay explained is with the graphic of a heartbeat. Instead of a steady rhythm with consistent breaks between each beat, Daisy looks less like an Olympic athlete's charts and more like a blue whale's. Long stretches of peaceful scenic travel are broken up by brief but explosive instances of action. Here's an example of one such interaction I had the other day. I had been making my way from town to town looking for a better backpack than the raggedy school bag I had slung over my shoulders. Since I was playing alone, I decided to forego using a map and take whatever route seemed interesting. At this point in the run, I had spent the last five or so hours with little excitement, besides running into a five stack of zombies practicing their run boosts in another Zed with seemingly blade-proof skin. My trip from the coast to the center of Trenaris had been peaceful. I had set my sights on a radio tower in the distance, and had found myself a few meters away from it when a pack of wolves attacked. Up until this point in the run, I'd fallen into a trap that has separated plenty of players from hours worth of their hard-earned loot. I had gotten comfortable with my surroundings. This time I was able to make my way to cover and take advantage of the totally intended game mechanics and get back to a steady heart rate, but I didn't take the situation I had just gotten myself out of for granted. I took time to appreciate the aspect of DayZ that has been unmatched by my entire game library. The brief explosive action that keeps me on my toes, the action that reminds me that no one's safe and a full inventory of top tier loot, food, and meds means jack shit when other players roam the same countryside as you. Thanks to the looming threat of losing all your progress in an instant, DayZ is a standout from the genre, and in turn other titles that have followed and tried to replicate its success. I've played other survival games, and I'd still argue that Rust is my favorite entry in the genre. If DayZ's heartbeat looks like this, Rust's would look like this. The regular action that Rust provides is engaging, and thanks to various game mechanics, social interactions come way more often than in DayZ. Thanks to safe zones and the ability to respawn in your base when you die, Rust is much more forgiving to those who choose to seek out human contact, regardless of its quality. Might as well give him stone tools so he can go fucking farm and Alright, let's go. Let's get out of here. Dude, I can't wait to the house this one. By comparison, Daisy's isolation discourages communication between players, at least on vanilla servers. While you might try to talk yourself out of an altercation on the coast between equally under-equipped players or form a brief alliance with a fellow fresh spawn, open discussion goes out the window once you've found your first weapon. Running into another player is rare and extremely harrowing when your pockets are full of 10 real-world hours of work. One moment you might be taking stock of your rations and ammo, and the next, boom, back to the coast. Again, some of you might be wondering why I've chosen to isolate myself further at a unique point in history when the company of others has become a precious commodity. 
In my defense, I'd like to point out that I still play plenty of multiplayer games, and that I spend a majority of my time playing games in the company of others. The attraction I felt to Daisy's rolling hills and vast oceans of green is a direct result of the other games I've spent my time in lately. Siege and Overwatch are entertaining, especially when I want instant gratification in action. VR is still, well, VR, and Minecraft's always got me. Daisy is groundbreaking, paving the way for dozens of clones and titles heavily inspired by its early influence, but when I think of unique factors Daisy has introduced to the gaming landscape, I don't really think about its sprawling map, realistic gunplay, or zombie hordes. Daisy is groundbreaking, paving the way for dozens of clones and titles heavily inspired by its early influence. But when I think of unique factors Daisy has introduced to the gaming landscape, I don't really think about its sprawling map, realistic gunplay, or zombie hordes. Instead, I'd argue that the aspect of Daisy that makes it stand ahead above the rest of the genre is its ability to teach humility. Yes, humility. If you've played other survival games like Ark or Rust, you know that the last attribute you'd apply to Nakeds on the Beach is humility. You down someone with little more than hemp seed and a rock and torch and rust, and they'd still try to convince you that they'd beat Shroud in a 1v1. Threats of retaliation, almost always accompanied by a vague threat of returning with numbers or better equipment, are the norm. In DayZ, most interactions between players go something like this. Depending on whether or not I killed the other player in that engagement, or simply knocked him unconscious, determined whether or not anyone came across that loot. A combination of who knows how many hours of travel, scavenging, and near-death experiences culminated in a quick trade of lead, and then a nice trip back to the beach. Some players might find the possibility of losing everything in the blink of an eye to be too daunting or punishing, but that ever-present threat represents my favorite aspect of DayZ. Years of playing games like Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas, and really any other game that has an inventory system has trained me to hoard my best items, be they guns, ammo, or healing items, until a vague, big fight that almost never comes. In Skyrim, I'd reload a save a dozen times trying to sneak past an enemy I didn't want to fight, not because I didn't have the healing potions or weapons to deal with it, but because I wanted to save them for a situation where I'd really need them. DayZ disincentivizes the player from falling into those familiar traps. The more unnecessary loot you have on your person, the less stamina you have to get out of hairy situations. Every piece of loot you take is one step closer to being unable to run behind cover, or navigate around a street packed with zombies. After the encounter with the wolves I showed earlier, I ended up filling my inventory with their meat and fat. After a little queuing, I had lined my pockets with days worth of food setting myself up for hours of exploration without having to stress about finding food or water. Once your basic survival needs are met, the map opens up to you, and offers gameplay unlike what you might find in any other game marked with the survival tag on Steam. Without having to loot towns and cities for supplies, I'm free to seek out military compounds and other places of interest. I'm geared up with plenty of ammo and meds, and nothing can stop me. Nothing, that is, but a bullet or two to the head. In DayZ, if you hold on to your loot with white knuckles, expecting to get out of every fight unscathed, you're setting yourself up for failure. Instead, once you realize that no one is invincible, and that everyone else is willing to kill to live another day, a massive weight is lifted from your virtual shoulders. Every second you survive with end gear loot in a plethora of food means nothing without the looming threat of losing it all in the blink of an eye. And you'll never appreciate what you have until it's gone.